Hey everyone, it's Jordan from Fish Keeping Made Easy and today I'm back with another care guide. In this video I will discuss the care requirements for the black long spine sea urchin. These make great cleanup crew additions to tanks with larger marine fish who would simply eat any crabs, shrimp or snails, or if you just want some weird oddball, this could be the next purchase for your tank. These sea urchins come in a variety of different shades including black, a dark blue and various violet shades. You can see the array of colours within mine, so a lot of people ask what the eye looking thing in the middle is and I think this video kinda describes it pretty well. These urchins however are pretty sensitive to water quality and salinity. It is recommended keeping them at the higher end of a salinity scale between 1.026 and 1.028. As previously stated, they're pretty sensitive to water quality and fluctuations, so it's not suggested adding these as your initial cleanup crew and they should only be added to a more mature aquarium. Minimum tank size suggested is around 25 gallons or around 100 litres, although smaller specimens could be grown out in smaller aquariums if the tank is maintained efficiently. I've had mine now for about 5 months and I can tell you they're excellent algae eaters and general scavengers. Their diet consists mainly of algae and various macroalgae. I have a variety of macroalgae which grow so quickly that the urchin has a continuous supply. I also leave general other algae on the back glass to accumulate and grow to ensure the urchin has a sufficient amount to graze on. It also eats meaty foods that haven't been picked up by the other fish or my cleanup crew yet. I've seen them eating mice, shrimp and chopped mussel. You can also add dried seaweed to the tank, which you can get from your local fish shop. However, mines does have a taste for corals, well, one coral specifically, the leather toadstool coral. As my leather toadstool was shedding, it was eaten by the sea urchin over the duration of a few days. However, this could be due to the fact that, if you saw my reef tank disaster video, I dropped some of my corals when I was transporting them to my new flat. One of the leather toadstool corals unfortunately didn't make it. I noticed that my crabs and some of the other fish were eating it, so I just left it in there as it was attached to a good bit of rock. The sea urchin was added around this time and also joined in, so it may have given it a taste for the leather toadstools. It's not eaten any other coral since, but definitely reef with caution as I've heard similar things from other people. Again, they are like bulldozers and mines has knocked a few corals over, so make sure you have them secured in place and really that should go without saying, I was just being lazy and was jamming the coral stands into the rock crevices. A question people ask a lot is if the spines are venomous, and the answer is yes. However, the venom is very mild and not fatal to people at all. It's a little bit like a bee sting or a wasp sting, it will result in some pain and some swelling, but it will reduce after a few hours. The bigger issue is that the spines are so brittle that they can break off and are hard to extract from the skin. This can result in infection, so it's important to remove all the bits of the spine if you get some in your hand, so make sure to handle them with care when you're adding them or removing them from your aquarium. If you find the spines on your urchin are falling off, this could be a sign of stress or illness. But really, these urchins don't require much other than good tank maintenance and the addition of some macroalgae or dried seaweed. Mines has been great and I would recommend it to anyone. So will this be your next aquarium purchase? Let me know below. So as always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like it, subscribe to the channel and of course, I will see you in the next one.